guys? Hanging out here with the Gigabyte 990FX-A UD7. And uh, this is based on AMD's 990FX uh, chipset. Very similar to the 890FX. In fact, there's not much changed at all. Uh, I do really like what Gigabyte is doing here with this board. This is the one that we used to test out the um, AMD FX 8-core CPU that they sent in. So uh, I, I got to play around with it and, uh, you know, see what we could do with it. Really nice for overclocking. One of the things I want to mention right off the bat is the uh, the PCB. It's a little extra nice. There's double copper in the PCB, so that's always nice. Um, it's not really noticeably thicker, but, I mean, we're talking like point zero something seven millimeters thicker is what it's going to be, but still you got more copper in the PCB, just making a higher quality product, and, I mean, look at this thing. It's all black. I mean, it's nice to see a gigabyte board, you know, without all the crazy colors and everything. Very sleek, professional, and also, if you're, you know, if you've got a gaming motherboard, what colors are supposed to be, Max? Black. That's right, it's supposed to be black. So, um, what's different in this uh, versus the 890FX? Well, you do have support for USB 3.0, uh, just a few small features here and there. Of course, we've got all the uh, SATA ports on this are the SATA. Uh, they're all they're all six gigabit SATA. Um, and let's see what else is what else is uh, different on this. Oh yeah, we've got more lanes for PCI Express. So let's take a tour of the board, and then you'll get an idea of what you can build with this. All right, come on over. First off, there's the lovely socket, and uh, that'll work with any AM3 Plus. It's also backward compatible with uh, the last generation or the latest uh, uh, motherboards. What are they? The Phenom 2s. It's, uh, it'll work with all those. So if you have an 1100T or 1050T, that, that'll work just fine in here. No worries. We have our DDR3 slots right over here. There's four of those, as you can see. It supports up to DDR3-1866. Uh, and that's dual channel. And you can push it a little farther in overclocking. And like I said, this is very, very stable. As you can see here, all the capacitors. Look at all those. They're all solid state capacitors. Very nice. Always nice to have that. I also want to note that around the uh, CPU, look at all those capacitors. You're looking at an 8 plus 2 phase power design right there. I see the MOSFETs and the chokes and everything, all ferrite core chokes, so they used all high quality products on this board everywhere you look. All right, moving on around here, you'll see right here beside the uh, motherboard power connector, there are three buttons. We have reset, and there's a power button. Very, very nice to have that on board, especially if you're testing, you know, testing out some RAM or something like that, or trying to figure out what an error message is, or maybe you're overclocking. Very nice to have on board. Also, right beside there, there's a plastic cap over this one. I'm going to pull it off. Underneath there, you can see that there is a clear CMOS button. And I like the fact that they've included this plastic cap because it's right beside the reset and the power, so you don't accidentally clear your CMOS and destroy all your settings. Moving along there, uh, we have an extra power connector on the back right there. And here are all of our SATA ports. There are three uh, that use the onboard controller and uh, two that use a third-party controller. And these are all six gigabit. So lovely there. Uh, fan connectors here and the front panel connectors over there. Moving right along, USB 3. Very nice to have a header for that right on board. We have our USB 2 headers here. There's three of those. And then beyond that, we have FireWire, and back here is your audio. All right, now look at the PCI Express slots. We have six of those plus one legacy PCI slot. Now, this does support SLI and Crossfire. So, NVIDIA, thanks for letting us do that. It was always a driver thing, really. I mean, it wasn't really the... the, the you know, the hardware wasn't compatible, it was that NVIDIA blocked it in the drivers. But now, SLI works on this board, and you can use up to four cards if you're using SLI. You can do that, or you can do a Crossfire with four cards as well. If you're running two cards, both of those two cards are going to run at the full 16 speed. So that is really nice to know. So you can start to get some ideas of what you can do with this. Also, take a look at the, uh, the nice heat sinks everywhere. Very nice, ultra-durable uh, branded heat sinks on the uh, north bridge and the south bridge, and right here over top of the power design, keeping everything cool around the motherboard so everything runs efficiently. That's what we need, nice and efficient. All right, looking at the ins and outs on the back. First thing you're gonna see here are your uh, audio connectors. We have uh, the, you know full surround sound right on back. Seven plus one channel, audio is supported on board. Moving right beside that, we have gigabit ethernet. Uh, there are seven USB 2.0 ports on the back. You'll see them scattered all throughout. We have two USB 3.0 ports on the back. There's eSATA. There's also uh, eSATA plus USB, a combo port, and uh, FireWire as well. I want to mention that one of the eSATAs on the back is full 6 gigabit SATA. 
so that's nice to have on the back, full 6 gigabit eSATA that is. Uh, beyond that we have our digital audio SP diff and then the coax audio right there. And right there that's a PS2 uh, mouse and keyboard combo port. So a very, very complete motherboard, one of the best uh, 990FX motherboards I've seen. Um, I mean, all in all, if you're going to build an AMD system, you've got to go with the nine, uh, 990FX. There's just no other, way, no other way around it. This Gigabyte one is, I mean, really, really nice. Overclocking, um, very nice. Oh, the BIOS. I should mention the BIOS. Now, I know you've seen some, some of the uh, different companies out there switching over to the EFI BIOS that support larger than three terabyte drives. This one does not come with the EFI BIOS, but it does have something called, like, I think it's called, it's hybrid EFI BIOS. And what it does is there's a bootloader uh, that loads like an, it's an EFI bootloader uh, and then it goes into your regular award BIOS but that allows you to use larger than three terabyte drives right off the bat without installing any of the drivers if you're using a new OS like Windows 7 64-bit. Uh, if you're using an older OS, Windows XP or something like that, you are going to need to um, install a driver to use larger than three terabyte drives but you know, it's a really, really uh, clever solution to be able to use the award BIOS but then use the uh, EFI bootloader, so you can take advantage of the larger drives. So a very well thought out board from Gigabyte, a very nice looking board. If you're going AMD, this is one of, uh, one of the best options I've seen in the market. I'll see you next time.